souls of three of Jesus Christ. We're grateful even on today that through the dangerous troubles, pearls, and snares, we shall behold you. We've been through danger, but we shall behold you. We've been through heartache and cried some tears, but we shall behold you. We shall say that heaven was cheap enough. So even now, Lord, we pray that you'd be with us even again on this preaching moment. We pray that God will be glorified. His people would be edified and the devil himself would be horrified. In the mighty, magnificent name of the Master, we do pray. Amen. Come on, if you happen to be in the house of God, let's put those hands together. Give God some praise in this place. This is the way the Lord has made. We will rejoice at me for our name. And before I get into my eight minute sermon, I just want you to put your hands together and celebrate God for the man of God of this house. My friend, my brother, Pastor and Francis, we thank God for him and his leadership. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. Uh, because of time, I will forgo my normal uh, procedure and ask you to stand for the reading of the word. First Kings chapter 19, the Bible reads like this. And they have told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with a sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by the morrow about this time. When he saw him, that he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and he left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might now and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, there an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Verse 8, And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. Just turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, we all got some weak spots. One turn to your other neighbor say, Other neighbor, oh, the neighbor, we all some weak spots. Come on, just tap yourself on the chest and say, Self, oh self, I got some weak spots. Amen. You may be seated even in the presence of the Lord. I have learned in my limited time on planet Earth that whatever goes up will always come down. Pastor Francis, that's why I've learned not to put no trust in my flesh. Because although the human body is marvelous and intricately designed, the Bible teaches that the human body is nothing but dust. P.B. Lawson said it best when he said that the average body has enough water to fill a 10-gallon barrel. Enough fat for several bottles of soap. Enough carbon for 9,000 lead pencils. Enough phosphorus for 2,200 matchets. Enough iron for one medium nail. Enough magnesium for one dose of salt. And enough sugar to fill a sugar shaker. And he said that if you would decompose all of these elements and fit them into dollars and cents with the monetary capitalistic system of the 21st century, it would come to about three dollars and seven cents. Your body, my body, worth only three dollars and seven cents. Think about it, if you would, the a, a trouble we go through to make three dollars and seven cents look good. We spent three, four, five hundred thousand dollars on homes to house three dollars and seven cents. We buy 30, 40, 50 thousand dollar cars for three dollars seven cents to drive up in. We buy hundred dollar hats to put on a head of three dollars and seven cents. We strut around as if God made us out of gold, reaching up on the top shelf for us, when in reality he reached down into the ground and formed us out of the dust. 
and it makes no sense, IBC, that one pile of dust can walk around acting better than one another. And the bottom line is that you can put lipstick on your lips, wig and weave in your hair, cologne on your skin, suit around your body, but we are nothing but a good looking, sweet smelling pile of from dust thou art. And to dust thou shalt return. And because we are formed of the dust, that means that all of us have some weak spots. I got some weak spots, you got some weak spots, we all got some weak spots. It's naive to think that just because you serve the Lord, just because the Lord uses you in and out of season, that you're strong in every area of your life. And if you can be honest on this last day of 2011 and admit, preacher, I'm not strong in every area of my life, then you can already identify with Elijah, who is the pivotal personality of this particular passage. Because understand, sometimes God may just expose your weak spot to let you know that God has not finished working on it. Do I have any company in the day? So Elijah here dwelling in the region and word begins to travel that Elijah is wreaking havoc in the nation. God certainly has his hand on Elijah and through the sum of events of his life here for to our sermonic vocal text, it leads Jezebel who has heard what Elijah is doing uh, uh, to say that Elijah is a dead man walking. He has experienced victory after victory. God has come through for him time after time and season after season for this bold prophet. But for some reason, Jezebel erects fear within Elijah and this lesson exemplified in the life of Elijah is expanded to us in the deep reality that we all got some weak spots. And so when Elijah hears that Jezebel seeks his life, Elijah runs a whole way, plants himself under a juniper tree, and the Lord nourishes him to start ministry over again. Yo, Mr. Shout right there, because I've lived long enough to know that when you can't do what you think you can do, sometimes you've got to be content in knowing that God will give you strength to start all over again will give you provisions to do what he ordained you to do. Prayer is a divine provision that can give you victory. Worship is a divine provision that can give you victory. Joy is a divine provision that can give you victory. Faith is a gift of a divine provision that can give you victory. Here it is. Several more minutes out, be out your way. How do you spiritually and successfully live your life despite the hairline fractures in your character? that lead negative emotions, depression, anger, pride, or fear. And I can really end the sermon right here. You trust that though the vessel runs empty, he will supply. Because God's supply surmounts my demand. Do I have any company in the world? Now, 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 here it is, here it is, here it is. Uh, uh, understand, understand, Jezebel's trying to mess with Elijah. And isn't this what, like what the enemy does? The enemy uses scare tactics so, so that the children of God can be in fear. Because the devil saw when God answered your prayer on the Mount Carmel's of your life. The devil saw when you got your promotion. The devil saw when you got what you didn't think you were going to get. And IBC, don't for one second think that just because God is blessing you, that you are off the enemy's hit list. No, no, no. The fact you're being blessed makes you hell's enemy, no, no. And so that's why the devil will use scare tactics so that you can start running from what God is trying to do through you. Do I have any coming in the building? So the first thing this text is telling to teach us is if, if, the, you, if you don't want to succumb to your weak spots, remember you can please some of the people some of the time, but you can't please all the people all the time. I don't know what it is in this generation, but everybody wants everybody to like them. Many of us 
must struggle with a tendency toward what I call a mass acceptability syndrome. We want to be light and being light means learning to please people that we deem important in our lives. Now watch this, people pleasers are often failures in the context of people pleasing because they can never please a hundred percent of the people a hundred percent of the time. So when Jezebel heard what Elijah had done, he was sore. And I realized, Pastor Francis, that if we stand around waiting for everybody to like us, to appreciate us, to sow into our ministry, to smile at you when you walk past, you're not ready for God to do big things for you because in this generation we are more concerned how we look to other people than how we look to God. But let me give you this revelation. Nobody else in this building, in this city, in this country, in this world has a hell to keep you from and a heaven to come. ministry, it would have been Jezebel, because Jezebel's problem is not with Elijah, Jezebel's problem is with a sovereign God, and when you realize that God got some haters, when you realize that God got some haters, when you realize that God got some haters, and you're in God's crowd, by default, you got some haters to I don't have any in the building. In your life, but there are some people in this city that can't stand what God is doing through you. But that's all right with me because my primary audience is Jehovah Jireh, God, my brother. Okay, let me get out of here. Second thing you've got to do in order uh, not to be overtaken by your weak spot is to recognize that God is not a one hit wonder. Elijah was commanded by God to go hide himself by the brook Cherith, like Pastor Francis told us. And the ravens brought him food. So while everybody is looking for food, Elijah has food looking for him. The Bible says that the ravens spent him day and night. They brought him bread and fish. Now according to Levitical law, like Pastor Francis told us, ravens were unclean animals. So I'm about to mess you all up now. So watch this. God fulfilled his purpose through an unclean animal. We should let you and I know that no matter what your 2011 has been, in 2012, God can still pull a good out of the God can put purpose in anything clean. He can use your unclean. He can use your black. He can use your white. He can use your man. Check this 
17. If he can call down fire in chapter 18, surely he can call for God's protection in chapter 19. But understand that Elijah has to realize that God is a sweet wonder and not a one-hit wonder. Do I have any company in the building? Okay, third thing, my penultimate thing before I leave you all alone. Third thing in this text, text is tailored to teach us is that if you want to not succumb to your weak spots, understand that God must lead. Okay, now, 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 understand, before Elijah gets to the Jordan tree, before he flees from Jezebel, understand Elijah has taken every cue from God. Elijah's biography is full of God sent, God sent, God sent. But here in our sermonic vocal text, Bible says Elijah went without being sent. Now, this is not just about his fear of Jezebel. This text uh, uh, exposes an anomaly in his relationship with God. The problem that you and I face is that we get so used to God that we begin to take God for granted. We get so used to church, the church becomes something we just do and not a fresh experience. Sometimes you understand, sometimes you should, in fact, all the time, you should never have a stale, stagnant, mundane, appreciation when it comes to God doing something. Your relationship with God ought always have a current repetitive astonishment. Every time God does something, you ought to be in awe. Every time He touches you, you ought to be in awe. Every time He speaks, every time He moves, every time He heals, every time He wakes you up, every time He provides food, it's a big deal. That's why I around folk who realize that the God we serve is a big deal. I can't hang around folk to see God as ordinary. I'm not trying to be guilty by association. And so if you have a relationship with people that can never wave their hand, if you have a relationship with people that cannot acknowledge the goodness of God, if you have a relationship with people that don't quote scripture as a part of their natural conversation, never in all that God, treat them with a long-handed spoon. Because God is not common. God is astonishing. Do I have a witness in this place? Okay, finally, four minutes out of your way. Finally, if you don't want to succumb to your weak spots, understand that His grace is sufficient. Okay, let me get out of your way. Let's keep it too long. Understand this afternoon that faith tolerated, sorry, fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Let me say it again with all your heads. Understand the fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Okay? Let me say it again. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Elijah at this point is a host to fear and fatigue. And fatigue and fear take up residence in him. Now look at Elijah's request. And I'll sit myself down. He said, Lord, take my life. For I am no better than my father. Now, 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 we know very little of Elijah's history. We can search all over through the scripture and all we find is Elijah the Tishbite. But here he says, take my life for I'm no better than my fathers. Now, whatever his fathers were, they were sinners. Because we have all sinned and we've all done what? Fallen short of the glory of God. So here now, Elijah realizes that he has he has, he has run in fear and not in faith. And what, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And whatever is not of faith is sin. And the new wages of sin is. But an angel came and gave Elijah sustenance for life. Okay, and all hope this I'm trying to show you. The wages of sin is. But an angel comes and gives Elijah sustenance for life. And that's where I want to leave you on this afternoon. I've done some things I know I shouldn't have done. I've said some things I know I shouldn't have said. And by rights, I shouldn't be here. But amazing grace. Are y'all going to sophisticate the sound of grace? I said amazing grace has sweet the sound. The same. You know what grace is? Can I talk about it? Grace is God leaving your direction and giving you what you don't deserve or what you cannot create. And so that's why when you get what you don't deserve and when you get what you cannot create, that's not the time to be lifted up in pride. That's the 
time to lift your voice up in praise. I don't know about you, but they sent him bread and water. Bread and water. Bread and water, which are metaphors for Jesus Christ. I tell y'all, y'all listen. Well, he's weak and he's weary, but he gets bread and water. I'm right. Okay, that again. Uh, he's weak. Francis, but he gets bread and water which sustains him for 40 days, which lets you and I know that God's strength is made perfect in my weakness. So understand that you've been through hell in 2011, you've been through good and bad, that you've been through some now common experiences, you've been through some cherry brook experiences, you've been through some Johnny Tree experiences, but I want you to know that Jesus does what his word said he would. Okay, okay, let, let me illustrate it out of way. My last illustration, I'll take my seat. When I was young, uh, uh, growing up, I used to want to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, and instead, in fact, today, these days, I don't watch much TV. All I watch is CNN and Criminal Man. That's all I watch. But when I was young, when I was young, I used to, I used to want to be a lawyer. And it stemmed from my love of uh, TV dramas such as, I know you're all too young to know about this, uh, TV dramas such as Murder, She Wrote. And y'all know about Murder, She Wrote? Uh, uh, I used to love to watch uh, uh, Peter Falk as Lieutenant Columbus. Okay, y'all. Well, but my own was Raven Burr as Perry Mason. Hey, okay, let me move on, let me move on. Now, now a few weeks ago, in my, in, my, in my professor's class, he was telling us that God is on trial up there by beings of a fallen world. I said, yeah, he's right, but as I processed it a little more, I began to figure out that God is not just on trial up there, but God is on trial down here. So please allow me to live my childhood dream for a real quick second as I prove to you that God is guilty of doing what his word said he would do. But like any good lawyer, I need me some evidence. So Judge Francis, I brought with me some exhibit A through D. And if this exhibit applies to you, what I want you to do is to stand to your feet and shout out evidence. Will you help me close this sermon? If this evidence applies to you, I want you to stand to your feet and cry out evidence. Okay, court is in session. Exhibit A. These are the people that have had aches and pains in the body. They have had sickness in your body. But you can testify the way you pray. She told her brother, God, my healer, exhibit B. Those of you that are so broke, in fact, you so broke that can't even pay attention. But what you can do today is testify to all the child. Oh, my God. 